the Apostle P channel update, August 2013, with some answers to FAQs. Coming up, stay with me, guys. Hi gang, Rob here. It's the evening of 17 August 2013. Coming to you with uh, a channel update for the Apostle P. And I'm also going to try to answer some FAQs, frequently asked questions, at the end of tonight's video. The month of August has been uh, a pretty big month for the Apostle P channel. And uh, thanks to that, in large part, go to Cody from Wrangler Star. <clears throat> As most of you know, especially uh, all you new subscribers, in the last week I've released uh, four videos, I think, of uh, that, that sort of document what has become known as the Wrangler Star Gauntlet Challenge uh, a few months ago, a couple months ago anyway. I made an offer to Cody uh, because he's a, a YouTuber and a man who I respect a great deal and uh, whose video content has helped me in my life uh, and he's helped me with my channel too and the offer I made was that uh, I knew he had a Benchmade 940 that he likes a lot and uses a lot and had always had trouble getting it sharp um, so since I sharpen knives I offered to sharpen his and uh, after some time passed he and I had occasion to speak on the phone and he said hey you know what if, if you'd still like to sharpen that 940 I'll send it to you and I said sure I'd love to and what started out as a favor just me trying to pay back things that Cody had done for me he didn't even know he did uh, it sort of flipped and uh, <laughs> although I enjoyed doing the work and interacting with him and with all you new subscribers and viewers who uh, were referred by Cody um, what he's done in the wake of all that uh, for my channel has been really overwhelming. I, I started the month of August with uh, about 350 subscribers and after Cody has reposted some of my videos and referred you all to them, <clears throat> um, I'm almost at a thousand. And that's, you know, that's huge for a, a small YouTube channel. Um, I'm really grateful for it. You know, about five years ago almost, I started my first YouTube channel. It was called RB Carnut. And, you know, the format, the medium of YouTube was kind of young. And those of us who had some expertise in knives and guns and gear who were on YouTube at the time, we were able to, you know, garner a pretty big audience. There weren't that many of us. And in the year and a half or so that I was on before I suspended that channel, um, I was doing pretty well, and when I came back on, when my circumstances in my life made it, made me able to do that, um, YouTube had gotten a lot bigger, and our segment of YouTube had gotten a lot bigger, and it was kind of hard to grow. It has been kind of hard to grow, and uh, so I'm, I'm really, really grateful to Wrangler Star, to Cody, uh, for sort of sending some of you all over here. So uh, it is with... Uh, with a very heartfelt sentiment that I thank you Cody and thank you guys and, and women who have come over to my channel and started watching my videos because of his advice and uh, it's it's a big deal and I can't thank you enough so onto the update uh, some of the stuff from July still carries over uh, ammunition supplies are good are getting better so there will be more shooting videos on my channel, more gun reviews. There are some guns in the safe I haven't gotten to yet uh, that I'd like to show you all. Of course, knife reviews will continue. Um, one thing I'd like to start doing, 
because so many of you send me knives to sharpen anyway, um, whether you need them sharpened or not, if you're a, a YouTube viewer but sort of a more serious knife collector, maybe you don't make videos and you, you like watching my take on knives, if you would, uh, if you'd like to send me your knives for review, um, I'm open to that. <clears throat> Just contact me by PM and we can arrange that. Um, don't know how many takers I'll have for that, but I, I do get the feeling a lot of you like the way that I look at and, and analyze a knife and how I relate it on video. So if you've got a knife that you think is pretty cool um, that you'd like to have my take on and have it on YouTube, let me know. We'll talk about it. Um, also, I've got some video content coming that's still in the process, sort of a formulating in my mind on Christian life and discipleship. Um, been a while since uh, since I've posted a video in that vein, so it's time to time to do some of that, some things that I need to say. Um, I I spoke in the beginning about being very very close to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, I think I'm within 30 or so of a thousand. I do plan a contest when I hit a thousand, and that will also coincide, I think, pretty close with 50,000 total video views, which is pretty huge to me. So if any of you have ideas on what you'd like to see given away, um, contact me about that. Weigh in in the comments or send me a PM. There won't be any, you know, thousand dollar custom knives as part of that giveaway, but you guys know what I do. and. Uh, if you can think of something creative or a creative way to structure the contest, let me know. I'm open to your opinions about that. <clears throat> Here's something I haven't done since June. Um, I'm going to sort of take the camera with me now, and we're going to do a little garden update. It's getting close. We've got some uh, we've got some food items ready. In fact, got a couple tomatoes. Just came off today, but. Uh, since we're overlooking the garden, let's let's walk and see how things are looking. And maybe some of you can help me with the trouble. Okay, guys, we'll here. start with what's pretty much done. Uh, our three rows of green beans have yielded very well. We've probably got one more picking. Here's a nice one that's ready. This was pretty representative. Well, they're still coming more than I thought. But they've really yielded well, the bean plants have. Now we're going to move to what's just starting to come. These are our habanero plants. Here's one that's maybe a few days from picking. If you look, these guys are full. There's a couple big ones down there. I'm pretty happy with the pepper yield this year. We also did some jalapenos. There's a couple monsters. Oh, there's one I got to pick. Just broke the stem. There's a trio. Those are looking really good. Now let's kind of move over to the tomato row. I don't have a lot of really ripe ones yet. But they're coming, and the ones that are almost ripe are going to be one wave. And it looks from the from the looks of how many small ones we've got, it's going to be a big tomato year. I'm going to walk around here. They got big too. The grape tomatoes are kind of going crazy. We just picked these yesterday. We've got a bunch more coming. I do have one little issue maybe you all can help me with with the grape tomatoes. Uh, they seem to be splitting right before they get ripe. So if anybody's had that experience and know how to prevent it, let me know. Got some monster tomatoes just about ready for picking over here. Look at these guys. Now here's my big problem though, guys. 
this is a zucchini plant, or actually two of them. And this has been a problem. I don't know what's causing it, but I've been getting blossoms. There's one that's just opening, one that's getting ready to open. Now here's a couple other ones, look here. They bloom, they shrivel, not one single zucchini. And over here, if you see this thing that looks like a rope laying on the ground, that's what's left of the yellow squash. Nothing. Uh, never made a blossom, it just withered and died. So, guys, if you can help me out in the comments, let me know why I can't grow squash. I'd appreciate it. But other than that, the first year for this garden in our new home has been pretty good. Okay, here's a... Uh... Here's another topic. I thought about making a whole video on this, and then I thought, uh, no, it, it doesn't really merit a whole video. Um, just something I want to say and get this cleared up. Um, I had quite a few comments in my my video about Wrangler Star's uh, Surefire Lumamax LX2 flashlight. And I made a comment in there about. Uh, specifically flashlights but it relates to other gear also that's made in China that you know competes in a certain product segment but costs vastly less dollars to purchase um, and you know I, I, I characterized uh, those Chinese products I think as junk and uh, well first of all that's not always true um, you know, there are other gear items besides flashlights. There are, there are knives, there are uh, packs and bags, those kinds of things. Oh, hang on a minute, guys. The uh, Samaritan helicopter for the hospitals flying overhead. But, you know, the point I want to make on this topic tonight is that it's not always true that a Chinese product that's a direct competitor with an American-made product uh, that costs half as much as that American product is, is substandard. Um, it's not always true. You know, in the case of flashlights, it might be true. In fact, most likely is true. But, you know, a lot of guys who are sort of flashlight guys also are knife collectors, and in the knife world, you know, that Chinese influence is a big deal. Um, you know, we've got everything from big name American knife companies uh, having parts of their product line produced in China. Spyderco does it, Benchmade does it, um, Lord knows Gerber does it. Just about everybody has a product line segment made in China. The third part of the problem, which are Chinese companies who are Chinese companies who import flashlights to the United States, flashlights, knives, other gear items. Um, and I shouldn't even call them companies because they're basically just agencies of the Chinese communist regime. Uh, San Renmu would be a great example where knives are concerned. They make a pretty good knife uh, with a completely stolen Benchmade access lock small knife they sell for about 20 bucks um, here and that's sort of the tip of the iceberg uh, we have direct knockoff clones complete with logos of Spyderco militaries paramilitaries Strider SMFs and SNGs uh, Chris Reed Sabenzas you know this is this is a country who has business units who produce knives with absolutely no regard for copyright laws, patent laws, they have absolutely no compunction about completely ripping off a knife design right down to the logos and selling it as a name brand knife for one-fifth, one-third the price. <clears throat> you know, my question for you guys would be, do you want uh, to spend your money, especially you American viewers, do you want to spend your money just because it costs you less to invest in a communist regime with a stated and on-track plan to own and control the United States of America? Uh, you know, 
Is that what you want your dollars to do? Especially something that you invest in, you know, something that you save for, that, that represents a, a serious capital contribution on your part. You know, where do you want that serious capital contribution to go? Uh, do you want it to go to the hands of the communist dictator and his system of government? Or do you want it to go to a, a hard-working American entrepreneur? That ought to be an easy question. You know, where it gets blurry is, is like this question. Do you want to buy a General Motors car? <laughs> Do you want to support its largest stockholder, the U.S. government, which may also be a communist regime? Okay, that's, that's enough of that soapbox. Uh, okay. I, don't, I try not to buy Chinese products. I don't buy Chinese spider codes. I still buy American spider codes, and I still buy... Taiwan built spider coats, but I won't buy a, a Chinese spider coat or a Chinese bench made. Uh, just don't do it. And it's not just a quality issue, it's a moral issue and a political issue. Sorry, but it is. And on we go. Um, let's see. Ah, here's kind of a big one. In the next couple of days, I will be vastly improving the quality, the production quality of my videos. I'm going to be buying a new camera, and it looks like it's going to be the Canon, I believe it's the SX40. Uh, I think that's a pretty good camera. If anybody's got any bad experiences with that model, please let me know. But everything I can tell, it's a pretty good value, and they've been out for a couple of years, so they're widely available used. should be able to buy one for a couple hundred bucks, well cared for, instead of 350 or 400 which is what they cost new it's a great still and a great video camera and by what I can tell um, if anybody knows that's a horrible idea please tell me but I've got a line on a couple right now that look like good possibilities so the production quality of my videos and the stills that I weave in them ought to be a lot better in the coming months <clears throat> and here's a big deal um, <laughs> I think in September I'm gonna get my first Google AdSense check. It'll be just over $100. Um, that combined with a pretty good bonus check from our tent sale we had a couple weeks ago at work. Uh, looks like it's going to fund a new knife and it's <clears throat> one I don't own and have always wanted to. Uh, not going to tell you what it is. Review to follow. Okay, now let's move to the fun part of this video. The FAQs. These are Questions that I find myself typing answers to over and over and over. Um, first of all, and this one just blows my mind, I still get this question quite a bit. Even though I've got three or four or five videos that specifically and in detail talk about this, people ask me what sharpening system I use. <clears throat> so if you're a new subscriber, or if you are a new subscriber months from now, look for the FAQ playlist. I use primarily, when possible, the Edge Pro Apex Sharpening System. Mine started as a Kit 1, which comes with a 220 grit stone and a 400 grit stone. I've augmented that with a 1000 grit stone and 2 and 3000 grit polishing tapes. I also use a drill collar for angle compensation between stones and I finish with a two-sided leather strop, a gray compound on the rough side, green on the smooth side. That about covers that. Uh, and speaking of that, another question that I answer quite frequently is, can I send you my knife to sharpen? How much does it cost for you to sharpen my knife? So here's the, the quick answer to that, and some of, sometimes it's going to require us talking before we can determine that. But in general, folding knives under 5 inches long, are $20 just for the sharpening system and $5 if I disassemble your knife, uh, deburr any internals, polish washers, uh, clean it out, lube it, reassemble it, and adjust it properly. <clears throat> you don't have to pay that. I don't have to do that for you if you'd rather do it yourself when you get it back. But even if you don't pay me to do it, uh, I really strongly suggest that you do it when you get your knife back. Because when I sharpen your knife, there will be a water slurry with abrasive material and metal shavings in it that will get in your pivot. You don't want it there. Um, 
So unless somebody really objects, uh, the price for a folder is 25 bucks plus return postage. I ship knives back in United States Postal Service, small flat rate boxes, priority mail. That's $5.80, $5.80. So just send me your knife and $6 in cash, uh, plus the $25 for the sharpening service. So it's $31 in cash in the box and your knife. Believe me, guys, in a priority mail box, that cash is as safe as your knife. Um, and I haven't lost one yet. <clears throat> Fixed blades, generally going to run $30 for anything like 5 to 9 inches. Uh, and if it's a longer blade, then we'll go in a small flat rate box, uh, $12 for a medium. I really don't like to ship any more economy than priority mail because I just feel like a valuable item is safer. In that, in that mode. So if you're sending me a 7 inch fixed blade, it's $30 plus 12 for a medium flat rate box for 42 I realize that's a lot of money to have a knife sharp. Um, <clears throat> nobody sends me a $40 knife and $40 to sharpen it. That, that'd be silly unless it's a knife you really love. I do actually have a guy send me a Kershaw Scallion this week because he loves it. Uh, he's gonna, by the time he pays me to sharpen it and postage both ways, he's gonna have the value of the knife in sharpening, but he loves it. I get that. Next thing, why don't we see Heidi in more videos? Well, my wife Heidi uh, hates being on video. In fact, if you watched my Wrangler Stars flashlight video the other day, that little comedy bit in the introduction where you know Heidi came out and asked in a real frustrated tone what I was looking for, well, that wasn't acting. She was really frustrated because I had sort of tricked her into being in a YouTube video. So I'll have to trick her again if you want to see her. Here's another one. Hey Rob, what uh, what church do you go to? What denomination are you? And <clears throat> well, here, here's my answer to that, and it's a bit of a long one. Uh, I am a Bible-believing Christian, and I rely on the sufficiency of Scripture for the development of my faith and for my knowledge of God's will, <clears throat> God's character, God's nature, and what he wants from me. No tradition of man uh, supersedes the sufficiency or the truthfulness or the inerrancy of Scripture. Um, that should tell some of you who are discerning Christians that I'm, there are some denominations I absolutely could not support. Uh, who put the tradition of man ahead of the, uh, the authority of Scripture. I also uh, trust my salvation to the sufficiency of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. My salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. He is my only mediator, my only intercessor, and my belief in Him who he was, what he did, and why are that belief that I have is what makes me able to approach the throne of grace with confidence and talk directly to my Father God. Uh, I am a member of a, an independent Baptist church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. But I don't identify myself as a Baptist, I identify myself as a disciple of Christ or a Christian. Uh, here's one. Uh, what are your favorite knives, Rob? Well, if you've watched many of my videos, you kind of probably already know. Uh, my favorite EDC blades, folders would, you know, be the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and the Benchmade 940. <clears throat> I always have a tough time which one I'm going to pluck out of the uh, out of the safe to carry every day between those two. Uh, yeah, there really aren't any, any EDC blades I put in their class. For large folders, you know, that, that's kind of a tough one. Uh, the cold steel, and I'm talking about every man's knives, not, not hundreds of dollars customs. Uh, knives people can afford, because the, the bulk of my knives are knives people can afford. My favorite large knives, though, <clears throat> would be the cold steel Recon 1, Benchmade 710. Uh, 
Lately, the Benchmade 275 Adamas is really a knife I like, and I really, really, really like my Lion Steel SR1A. Uh, fixed blades, <clears throat> I don't carry fixed blades that often unless I'm outdoors, backpacking or camping. Um, but if I had to, you know, the best large fixed blade for me is a, it's a beater knife. It's my Ontario Spec Plus SP5 that. Uh, the ins my insanity of sharpening video, it's the knife in that video. For a small fixed blade, it's the one uh, that Campfire Talk helped me resurrect. It's that, that pre-1920 case 5-inch buoy with the stag handles. Uh, if I had to have one fixed blade and be outdoors for a few days, that's the one I'd take. Uh, you know, you can make dinner with it and you can make kindling with it. It's awesome. That's 100 years old. That's just me. Last one, and I can't leave this out. Uh, in the last 24 hours, I've gotten a lot of questions. Who is this guy, the Rebman? <laughs> I made a video of the Rebman when it rained cats and dogs at our tent sale and then made one of them yesterday. Uh, his name is Tim Rebman, R-E-B for blue, M-A-N. His words, by the way. Uh, he's worked for me at the car dealership for nine and a half years. He's a great guy, but we don't know what goes on in his head. In fact, he will tell you, hey, I don't know what goes on under this skull cap. And if he doesn't, we sure don't. I wouldn't, I don't think we've seen the last on the Apostle P of the antics of the Revenant. Uh, but he's a great guy. Give him some views and some thumbs up. He eats it up. He, he heard that we were at 290 views on his video from yesterday. He's ecstatic. Uh, so, <laughs> go Timmy. <laughs> uh, I think that's about it, guys. Again, if you have any questions, any ideas for videos, uh, anybody need any knives sharpened or a knife that you'd like to send me for review, get a hold of me. Uh, weigh in in the comments or send me a PM. Any ideas for the 1,000 subscriber contest? I'd like to hear those too. And since we're almost there, if you're watching this, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up, you know, share my videos on Facebook, and uh, hopefully we can get over that hump here pretty quickly, and we'll give some stuff away. That's all I've got for today.